Listen up or run for cover. Dropping knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it. The, the real Robin Bradley Bombs. is dropping. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I've got an old treat. He's an old treat because he's been on a few times, but every time he goes away, he starts hitting more and more home runs, and every time he comes to town, I'm like, dude, you better stop back in. Tell us what shit you've learned. Folks, welcome Mr. Albert Preciado. Thank you for having me, Brad. So, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Alberto Preciado. So really happy to be back on here. And uh, just first off, I want to start it off by thanking you for, you know, being a cool person, being a, being a real friend. And uh, a lot of people come and go, uh, a lot of influencers. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot, spent a lot of time with them, but you've always been a super genuine, super cool guy. And I know you helped a lot of people uh, kind of take off. And uh, I'm one of those people, and, and I'm really proud to... Uh, have you as a friend and uh, learn so much from you. Well, buddy, that's sweet of you to say. And man, I'll go ahead and take it. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Anyway, welcome to Dropping Bizzles, my friend. What are you up to nowadays? I see you got the new Paddock Philippe on the wrist. Yeah, it's a little treat, you know, like uh, I wanted to get it. But before that, I wanted to make sure that I had enough cash flows, uh, enough. My business was bringing in a certain amount of revenue. So finally, last how's your, how's your business doing right now? Well, we broke eight figures comfortably last year. This year, we're going to do more than 20 million in revenue. Is that huge for your industry? For me, yeah. For, yeah, for me, especially for me, because uh, it, it was a big, uh, I was about to go out of business many times and I just never gave up. And, you know, sometimes it's a Friday and I don't know how I'm going to cut payroll. And then Thursday, I know you know how it feels. Thursday, big sale comes through and I pay everybody. And it's it was like that roller coaster for many years. And people made fun of me that, you know, I wasn't a good speaker. I didn't know what I was doing. I wasn't an entrepreneur. I was living paycheck to paycheck. And you know what? They were right. But then finally, when, when I made it through that part and I really started getting overpaid, now I, I like to, uh, it feels kind of good, and I like to kind of throw jabs at those people sometimes. Yeah. What, what would you say to those people if you saw them on the street? I, I really would just tell them that I, I wish them the best. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what I'd tell them? I'd say you're wrong like a Hong Kong. At the end of the day, dude, how many haters did you have? Now, when you say haters, Mr. Duran here always seems to think they don't exist. It's just a way to deflect, which that's high-level shit, but somewhat truthful. But as we all know, a hater is a hater, is a someone who talks shit about you that may not know you, that may just see you in multiple Ferraris. How many times someone said, why do you need two Ferraris? A lot of times. How much money has those Ferraris made you? Oh, at least a uh, hundred times more than what they're, what they cost it. Yeah. Now, again, the reason I'm br pr bringing it up is because people tell you, Albert, what are you doing? You don't need two. You're being foolish. You're being dumb. And you got a Rolls Royce. Dude, that's dumb. Dude, you're foolish. How many times? Many times. And I'll add to that. I'm buying a Rolls Royce Cullinan and it's because it's, it's going to be a tax, uh, it's for tax purposes. So most people don't know the information. So. I know it, but I've paid mentors to learn from them. So that's why we're getting the Rolls Royce Cullinan. So people are going to be like, why are you buying the Rolls Royce Cullinan? But it, I'm buying it, not leasing it. If you buy it 6,000 pounds or more, it's a lease. It, I mean, it's uh, an expense. But people were saying, why are you doing it? Yeah. And, and I would call that, according to you know today's terminology, a hater. Well, you never even if they, even if they're not being rude, my point is is haters don't have to be rude. Like you know, blah blah, because the word hate makes it sound like they're a hater. But sometimes haters are very nice. Yeah, and you've had a bunch, a lot, yeah, and they don't even phase you. How come? Because I'm really confident. I'm really confident, but I think the difference is that I'm I'm really humble to learn. You know, like I'm not the the cocky, confident, arrogant guy. But somebody like you, you know. 
and even people like 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 your camera guy who's an amazing guy and and all your people that you have in the back your staff like i learn from everybody i don't think i'm better than than everybody and uh, and that humility humility to learn and keep learning from people that that know more than i do is what keeps me growing and how come like that doesn't eventually when do you start to think hmm i know more than everybody i'm the one with the ferraris never why not because you're never going to be the best you know there's always going to be somebody better than you i don't know what that feels like albert i could only imagine <laughs> i will often wonder what that feels like tell me how exactly what feels like <laughs> Knowing that there's someone else out in the world better than you. Well, there's always going to be somebody making more money than you. There's always going to be somebody better looking than you. There's always going to be somebody taller than you. That's what I mean. So you can't always think you know everything because that's when when you're when you start falling down when you start losing it because people are working harder than you coming from behind. What if you're making a hundred million a year? There's people making a, a billion dollars a year. What if you're making a billion dollars a year? Somebody somebody else is is making more. So why is it you're in, it sounds to me like you're competitive. Very. What made you competitive? I, I want to be the greatest ever to live in this planet. Well, you can't always be the greatest. But that, that's my target. There's always someone better than you. There is, but I, but, but. Uh, <laughs> but eventually, dude, if you, if you achieve your goal, you'll be the best in the world. Well, the thing that keeps me driven is that whenever I accomplish a goal, like I want a higher goal. And, and I think me always being overwhelmed, having a lot of activity going on, is what keeps me going. And so, so where do you go from a Rolls Royce to what? Well, to me, it's not about cars anymore. Like to me, it's um, like I want to build my empire. Like I want to build these companies. Now I have twelve flows of income, and I want to keep. I want to keep building them, building them up. So one of my 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 core business is mortgages. I want to. I'm doubling every year, and that's what I what I'm shooting every year. So twenty million is going to go to forty million, and I'm going to go eighty million, one sixty million. So every year, if I don't at least double the reb, then I'm not winning. So that's what I want to do. I want to keep doing that. And then once I become a billionaire, like I, I have a, my purpose is to change this world. Like I'm not okay with a lot of things that the government's doing. I'm not okay with vaccines. I'm not okay with all these uh, California state laws. Uh, I want to change that. Like I'm not okay with the whole COVID and all these things that are going on with the masks. You know, like a lot of these things I'm not okay with. Education, like I'm not okay with elementary school, middle school, high school, I don't think you learn shit from those things. So I want to I want to change like the the teaching how we teach our kids, uh, how we learn technology, marketing, all that stuff, which is kind of the reason why why uh my big purpose of driven, you know? So driven's another example. Everyone told you not to do that. Yeah, except one fella. Remember that. But anyway, old driven, now everybody's calling you to try to speak there. Yeah. By the way, it's this month. It's it's next month. September 18th, 19th, yeah. Where at? We have three approved locations, so we're going to make a final decision this week. TBD? Yeah. Where do people get tickets if they want to go to Driven? Just send me a DM or go to DrivenEvent.com. Is it live? Live. It's not going to be a virtual event like everybody else? I don't do those things. You want to do live? Yeah. What about all the people that are afraid of this COVID? They're not welcome there. Only people that aren't afraid? Yeah. Yeah? And by the way, you've already sold a bunch of tickets, so according to, it seems like they're coming. Oh, yeah, they definitely are. So you, you've sold a shitload of tickets already. Yeah. Damn. There's a lot of people, I think, out there that aren't afraid of travel and gathering. Yeah. Are, are you going to honor any kind of six feet apart? Well, th we have to follow the, the guidelines. Uh, so as long as we follow the guidelines, we're going to be like, you give everybody's going to get a, a driven mask. Uh, you're going to have your, you know, the distance you have to keep. But there's loopholes for everything. I always find the loopholes. I, I like to bend the rules. That's a, good, that's a good philosophy if you do it, obviously, ethically and morally. I call it shortcuts. Bending the rules. Yeah. Like, again, what are the rules? The gray areas. Where are they? And are they really gray? What rules have you broken recently that paid off? Well, I don't know about breaking rules because I don't, I, I stay away from Bend breaking them. rules. Bend them. <laughs> so what rules have you bent lately? Well, for example, like um, taxes, uh, credit. Uh, like Taxes, pay as few as you can. Yeah. And, and credit. 
uh, leverage as much as you can. So a lot of people uh, ask me, Albert, what are what do you mean by self improvement? I know you you say you do five hours of self improvement. What should I do? And I tell them, well, it depends what you're solving for. Like it depends where you are right now. So you have to start where you're at. Don't compare yourself with an Albert, or with a Bradley, or with a you know the billionaire. We're not there yet. Some of us are are higher levels than others. So when people ask me, what are you working on? I tell them, well, I'm pretty blessed to be doing really well financially. Uh, I'm as wealthy as ever as I've ever been, but not too much compared to other people. But what am I studying right now? Taxes and credit. Why? Because I have a, a company, like I call it a triangle, but I have mortgage guys, ambiance realty. Ambiance realty gets 100% commission, but it's there's a, something... I do that for the reason that it flows mortgages to mortgage guys. Driven gives me the, the mic to promote my other businesses. So I'm starting to create businesses inside the business. So, for example, every time we do a transaction for a mortgage or real estate, there's escrows. Escrows are about $1,500 for escrow transaction that I'm losing because I'm giving it to another escrow company. So if we're closing over 200 deals a month, that's 200 times 1,500. I just added an escrow company. What do people need in, in my space? Everybody needs credit repair. I already have a database of that. So why am I studying credit? That might answer that question, but also taxes. Now, now one of my problems is that I make a lot of money. So how do I not pay taxes and make millions? So that's what I'm studying, but it's different for everybody. Somebody starting in entrepreneurship, might, I might recommend read Rich Dad Poor Dad. Somebody more ahead, I might be like, hey, read Principles by Ray Dalio. But it all depends where you're at. And some people don't have the systems and they want to learn marketing. There's no point of marketing if you don't have your systems because then you're going to scale chaos. So I learned that the hard way. But it, it depends for everybody. That's, that's the last one. 100% correct, folks. You don't want to scale chaos. So, Albert, let's go back to your childhood a little bit, huh? People, it, people might be listening going, well, who is this dude? Well, as you just heard, he's got a mortgage company, a real estate company, and kind of a promote, almost like a marketing personal brand promotion type company where he gathers all the industry experts in, you know, in relation to what entrepreneurialism, and then basically just, you know, rents out a kick-ass auditorium, throws some Ferraris, people together, networks, teaches and, 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 you know, kind of builds that entrepreneurial community driven coming up September 18th and 19th, by the way. And then, uh, as you know, he is successful, correct or incorrect. Correct. So let's go back before all that. You're just Albert Preciado. You're, you're in Beverly Hills with your dad. He's a painter. Yeah. You'd walk around with him and you'd see these big houses and you said you saw a Ferrari, and you said, I'm, I want one of these. What would your dad say? He told me that it's not for us because, you know, we're Mexican. We're minorities. And he said, you, this isn't for us. This yeah. is for what? Who? For the rich gringos. So he was, he was basically saying this is for the white folks. Yeah. The rich white folks. Yeah. And no, off no offense to, to, to white people because I love white people. You're, you're white. But, but um, that's what we think uh, Growing up, a uh, Mexican family, everybody is, is they, we're limited. Uh, we don't believe we could do great things. We believe that we're meant to be, you know, down here. We're, ne we're, not the, we're never going to make it. We're not Donald Trump's. We're not those kind of people. So we just got to kind of stay low. So, and, and, and when, I grew, when I grew up, my family used to, like, not like, you know, like, the, the, they call them gringos because they're bad and they're racist and they're this. And that was a big mistake. Not everybody is like that. Most of them are the nicest people, you know? And then when I grew up, I started learning the reality of everything. And then I started saying, you know what? Everything is, is not like I grew up with my family, my uncles, my aunts telling me things. So I started learning the, what it really was. And then I grew out of there. But my, parent, my dad, I remember that like yesterday, I was there. And we go to this mansion. We live in the ghetto where they sell drugs and they shoot people. And we go to Beverly Hills to uh, paint houses. I was six years old. And I always wanted to work. And, and I told him, take me with you. Because like Italian wanted to come with me right now. And kids are like that. Kids believe they could do anything. Nothing is impossible. So I go with my dad. And I see this mansion. I see this red Ferrari. And I tell him, dad, like, why don't we live here? Like, why are we living in, in that ghetto? You know, why don't you drive this car? Why do we drive this car? And he just looks at me and he tells me that's not for us. And I ask him why. 
And then I told him, like, long story short, I want it. I want to make it. How do I do it? He said, as long as you don't quit, you'll get there. And you have to work harder than everybody else. So I, I learned work ethic. It's, it stuck to me. And then also never quitting. Like, I've never quit in anything. Ever. Ever. Mm. So after he told you that, how long until you... Because I saw you with a, in a picture where you had, like, dolphin shorts on a red Civic. You looked pretty funny back in the day. So it's been... Back then, you didn't have any loot. How long has it been between him telling you that and then you you and that red Civic? Well, how I was, old were you there? Uh, back then, I was 18. Okay. About 18 years old, but I was always very driven, and I had that ambition. But so even from six to twelve, even though yeah, well, what you had a civic, you know, you 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 thought you were. You, did that hurt you at all? No, you know him what telling you that. You, you know what happened? Like I, I, I'm a big studier, so I like studying. Like I, I was studying a bunch of different religions, reading a lot of different books. I ended up going to a Scientology um, church, right, or self improvement place, because I was referred to one of an influencer and a, a past mentor. And one of the things that I learned there was the reactive mind. And I'm not a Scientologist, but I've studied it. And the reactive mind makes you react to past things that happened to you. So I remembered, that's a bit, the biggest thing that I learned from there, that when, when, you're in the, when you're in elementary and kids start making fun of your accent, you get put on special ed, you get bullied, that stays with you. Then in middle school, you can't get girls, you get pimples, you're super skinny, people make fun of you, that affects you. So when you grow, you're a very insecure guy. The guy was a very insecure guy. And then I had to go back and kind of clean all that up, forget about it, and remember that I was a kid again. And then when I was a kid again, kids believe they could do anything. Like, for example, uh, like Italia, when she was a little baby, Berlin. Berlin's my little daughter. She's uh, eight months. She doesn't ask till, mommy, mommy, can I give some milk? She's like, give me that tit. <laughs> and she cries until she gets that tit. And then guess what? Like, she's not scared. They're fearless. I, I, your little girls, look at how, how fearless they are. Like they're jumping up and down and kids are like that until somebody makes them insecure. So when I grew, when I grew, uh, grew up, I got, I got past that and then I started making money. I started making sales. I worked on all my weaknesses. I started working out and all this stuff, reading books, reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad and more books. So I made a lot of money in the mortgage business only to lose everything 2008 and become homeless. And I was with a lot of girls. I was good with the ladies just like you. Maybe not as good as you, but, but pretty close. It, it would be a battle that, that maybe we could go back and compare. But uh, 2008, I lose everything. And the only girl that I want to rescue is my now wife, Sil. She stayed in that Ford Explorer for two months with me. And we had nothing but the Ford. So we were pretty much homeless, but kind of not homeless because we did have the Ford Explorer to sleep. And you did sleep in it? For two months. I didn't quit the mortgage business. So the mortgage industry, I stayed. And then eventually every month got a little bit better. And then I got out of that Ford Explorer. And then every year I improved. Why didn't you just go home to your parents' house? Because they always told me that uh, the mortgage, getting in real estate and mortgage was a big mistake. And that it was, it, was, it was dangerous. I could lose everything. And I did. So I didn't want to go back to them and tell them you were right. I lost everything. What they want you to do? They wanted me to get a degree and go to school. A degree in what? Anything. Because because that's the thing to do. As just go to college. Yeah, for, for us uh, Hispanics, uh, you just have to go to college and get a degree and get make your sixty grand, seventy grand a, uh, a year. Where did you grow up? Echo Park. And how old? downtown LA? Born here. I was born here, but. My parents only knew Spanish. So I, it was like, I was like full Mexican from Mexico. They were from Mexico City. So they taught me Spanish. So when I went to, this, to the first grade, I knew absolutely no English, just Spanish. Because they didn't. Yeah. Hmm. What did what, your dad do? Painter. And your mom? She was a teacher assistant. Elementary school. Hmm. And they're both still alive? Mm-hmm. How many brothers and sisters? Just one brother. Seven years apart. Interesting because, you know, keep going though. I want to. I want to just try and ascertain some things. Keep going. So, I never. So going back a little bit, two thousand eight. The reason why I lost everything wasn't the recession. I was always uh, very driven, very into self improvement. 
uh, very ambitious, but it was my priority. So if I could give some advice for people listening to this, I might see like, oh, he were, he has a paddock, an AP, the Ferraris. G just got a, a house and a $10 million home in Beverly Hills. Uh, they see that. They see my family. They see my lifestyle. But 2008, I was just like this. I just didn't have the experience and the resources that I have today. That took me 10 years. But I had a little bit. But I had bad priorities. I had bad, uh, bad friendships. You know, like I was doing cocaine. I was drinking. I was going out six times a week, sometimes seven days a week. I was going out with multiple girls at the same time. And sometimes go 48 hours not sleeping because I was under the influence. And that's what messed me up because I was able to, I got a house for 600,000 in Sierra Madre in the hills that I, that I had the plans and everything to build a $1.6 million home. So I was, it was gonna cost me 200 grand. I was gonna owe 800 and I was gonna make, I was gonna sell for 1.6. So I was gonna make some very good money at 23, 24 years old. But 2008 came and I had no savings. I spent all the $200,000 that it was going to cost me to build it on drugs, women, and alcohol. And my priorities were fucked up. And that's why I failed in 2008. But I said, you know what? I got myself into this. I got to work my, out, my ass and out of this. I got to fix it myself. I can't go back to mommy and daddy and cry. I got to fix it myself. And I did just that. And then now today, see like, they see what life I have now, but it was, a, it was not an overnight success. It was an overnight 10-year success story. Was it an overnight decision? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, when that happened, one time I crashed because I didn't sleep and I was under, un, under cocaine. And, and I drove home. And that day I said, you know what? The cops came, but nobody, I guess I looked pretty, pretty sober because of the cocaine. So, but I was drunk uh, and under the influence. And that day I said, I'm never going to do cocaine again. And that day I stopped. I never tried it again. This was like maybe eight years ago. Mm. Instant decision. Yeah. And it was because you got pulled over. Were you sh scared yeah. shitless? Yeah, because I have three DUIs. That would have been like my fourth. I would have been done. And I said, I need a miracle right now. And, and I just said, you know what? Enough of all this bullshit. I could have been dead. I could have, a lot of things could have happened. I'm not, I'm surprised I'm still alive. So I feel like somebody's watching me, taking care of me. So I said, n I committed to never doing that again. And then now, that's why I tell you that now my commitment, my purpose is really to make a difference in this world for the better and help a lot of young millennial entrepreneurs that are struggling and are confused. See, a lot of people think they're uh, entrepreneurs. Everybody wants to be the boss, but they don't want to work hard. And they want to take all these, they listen to the four hour work week. And a lot of these um, entrepreneurs are confused intrapreneurs. There's a difference between entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs. You have a lot of intrapreneurs within Lightspeed that are going to become millionaires, multimillionaires under you. But most people think, oh, I got to leave Brad and be better than Brad and be an entrepreneur and huff and puff and be, call myself a CEO. You don't have to do that. Sometimes somebody, sometimes an entrepreneur, becomes more wealthy than the entrepreneur. So you just have to know who you are and, and then you go from there. But it's a big mistake. A lot of people have, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have left you, have left the other people to become entrepreneurs only to regret it. And that's happened to me a lot too. You've had three DUIs? Yeah. Wow. So pulled over and arrested. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you, how long ago was that? First DUI was uh, when I just turned 21. So I, I, I was fortunate to be 21. Just turned 21, get a DUI. But I was driving and drinking like 20 years old. A lot of times. Never got caught until I turned 21. Then... How buzzed were you? I wasn't that buzzed. Don't, yeah. we, don't we always say that when we're driving? Yeah, yeah, but that time I wasn't. See, I'll tell you when I really was buzzed. Because uh, I even... I, was, I, w I wasn't buzzed the first time. I was maybe 0 .011 or 0 .011 or 0 .011 or 0 .011 nine something like that not barely over the limit but have you ever blown like a 1.8 yeah uh 1.8 two point something <laughs> i i i blew up I, I blew up i blew high i sound i sound funny when i when i bust up laughing but yeah dude 1.8 yeah. you ever I, heard I, of that no that's no. like that's like a 1.6 1 1.8 that's a lot yeah you're hammered well you're not real hammered i've seen threes are you serious sure I got 0.18. I thought I was pretty hammered. Well, you were. 
point eighteen. So I got my second EY and third EY at the same time when the when the recession was going on. So two thousand seven, I was losing everything. So I was I said, well, you know what? I have a few a few couple couple uh, twenty thirty thousand dollars in the bank. Uh, I'm losing everything. My homes are on, like they're being foreclosed. My two homes, my Mercedes S550 is being repossessed. They're calling me every day. Let me just enjoy my my Mercedes and my Rolex watch with diamonds. Let me just enjoy that. Go out, get some girls, you know, get some pussy, and and enjoy it while I I'm, I'm gonna lose everything anyways. So get a DUI, then I get a second DUI, and then that was my second and third. That was when I was that was 2007. So after that, I've been clean as can be. You refuse, especially with Uber nowadays. Driving yeah. drunk, stupid. Even yeah. one drink, like just take an Uber. Well, for, for in my industry, it's one of the most uh, highly regulated by the government, the mortgage industry. Just like insurance, is like our, our mutual friend Patrick Bedavid. I learned a lot from him too. And I don't know if your industry is the same way, but if I get a DUI, uh, I go out of business because it's. I, I have to have a clean record. I have to have clean, good credit. I, they they watch all my stuff, so it's one DUI and I'm I'm done. What do they do? I my business uh, closes. They, they I lose my license. What's the license called? Uh, DR uh, mortgage license, real estate license, corporation license for backed by the Department of Real Estate. So like if if you get a DUI, they take it away from you. And then you're done. I have to start all over again, hmm. or I have to find somebody else. But I just can't, I can't do that because a lot of lives depend on, the, on me now. Like we employ over 300 people now. And they're all kicking ass, taking names. Yeah. Well, you had one of them here, uh, Willie. Willie, a great guy. So what, going back a little bit to the intrapreneur and, on, and entrepreneur, uh, Brad, a lot of people, uh, I have a few, a few people right now, they're going to get equity uh, in, in our company. So people that leave, they lose on all the equity. So you got to think about, do I want a percentage of a billion dollar company with that's, that's already on the rise or do I want to start all over and do that? And people don't realize that to, in today's world, anybody can start a company. However, if you notice, every big company has a face, right? And, and, and whether you like it or not, you need an entertaining face. You need a good looking face. You need a face that's good at talking that people are gonna like. Like you have Kylie Jenner, 19 year old billionaire. When, when people think about light speed, they think about you, right? You talk, you're a good talker, you're funny, good looking guy. When people see PHP, they have uh, Patrick Bedavid. When people think about uh, WFG in the past, they thought Ed Milet. People think about the whole uh, you know, Cardone stuff, they think Car Car Grand Cardone. But if you need somebody like that to drive the company, somebody that's going to be traveling, speaking, promoting, and all that stuff. So anybody can start a company, but are you going to be that person? It takes a lot of work, and people don't understand that. When you're better off, maybe being an entrepreneur for, for Brad, maybe being an entrepreneur for a Patrick, and then maybe getting a piece of a multi-billion dollar company, or maybe a hundred or two hundred million dollar company. Just people, I think it's ego that gets in that way. So that's one of the things that I like to teach at Driven. Like, there's a lot of things that that um that you have to have. You have to have your resources. Like, I believe you need three years of reserves for your business. If you don't have that, you're you're in trouble. Because any time you could have something like coronavirus wipe you out. And I learned throughout my studies, my experience, and paying millions of dollars for mentors. You need obviously you need sales because without sales, I saw you're meeting uh, with your salespeople. You did did a great job, by the way. Like it looks like everybody's enrolled, paying attention. But without sales, you have no business. But then what do you need? You also need to train, which you were doing a great job over there. So sales training, and then people want to market, but they fail to realize you need your systems in place, operations, and with all those four components, like it's going to be hard for you to blow up. And then what do you do when you start making a lot of money? How do you not pay taxes? How do you leverage with your credit? How do you get start investing that money into real estate? I learned that. So that's a lot of that's a lot of the stuff we cover at Driven and we teach people and young entrepreneurs. And then you coach them. Yeah. Especially in the Latino market. Like I was looking the other day, dude, you're getting like a bunch of hits on YouTube. You're interviewing all the big wigs. 
you're quite the name, especially in the Latino community. But that's because I never quit. Because remember in the beginning, people used to make fun of my YouTube. They used to be like, oh, he doesn't even have a thousand subscribers and this guy sucks and he's not an interviewer. And now I have videos with hundreds of thousands of views. You know, now it's, it's just on the upcoming and I see, it, I see it now growing exponentially. Every morning I wake up and I have like 10,000 more views on my YouTube channel. And I have like subscribers just are just stacking up right now. So in the beginning, it's hard to go from zero to 1,000 subscribers. And then it's really hard to get to 2,000 subscribers. But as long as you don't quit and you believe in your product and you believe that you're really helping people, providing value, then it's going to get, it's going to grow. Most people just stop when they're only one inch away from, you know, getting that victory. What about all the, all of us old dogs, you know? We're old. How old are you? I turned 37 uh, a couple months ago. So you're almost old too, dude. Yeah. So you got to, you're, you're old, you're old. I'm young. Routine's going to have to end soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, three, three more years, dude, you'll be 40. Then yeah, what? I, I mean, I, I will be a billionaire by 40. I, I know that. By 40? Yeah. Damn. Folks, you guys heard it here. Now see, follow Albert just to make sure we can support his endeavors and get him to a billion. And also, while you're at it, follow me and help support me. What do you think about people that are bummed out about your success? I have nothing uh, bad to say about anybody. Like, I, I really respect um, everybody. Like, I, you know, like, I have, um, I, I forgive, but I don't forget. So, uh, the biggest uh, way for me to pay back to the people that made fun of me or didn't believe in me or didn't want to collaborate with me, it's going to be through my success. And, um, and I wish nobody but the best. And if somebody, at, like sometimes people ask me, what do you think of this person, that person? I, I'm not the type that talks bad about anybody. I, I just always have something positive to say about everybody. So I wish everybody the best, but if I, if I can never help, um, I'm here, I'm here to help. But like I said, I, I, have very good memory so i don't i don't forget things so you were you went bankrupt or you were going to you're sleeping in a ford explorer sill stayed with you you were selling shit out of starbucks mortgages yeah and then and then fortunately the mortgage started don't going well or do you think because you quit doing coke and being a you know i don't want to say scumbag because again i mean you know some people I know good people that are just making mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Doing coke doesn't make you a scumbag. It just makes you naive. Yeah, I mean, I could only speak based on my experience, but I know billionaires that do coke. Of course. And and uh, and they're billionaires, but that's why you have to have a purpose in, in my in my eyes. And I just don't feel like like I wouldn't be able to do coke and look at my little daughters. You know, uh, you're not. Yeah, but can you imagine you on coke? No. Well, no. you'd be really driven. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be extra driven, wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 but you think you'd, you think you'd, but see, here's the thing. And I, and I agree too, cause I've done Coke, weed. I've done some things. I don't do anything anymore only because I feel the same way. Number one, I just think it deteriorates your, your, your being. Yeah. Drugs. Yeah. I think it removes. I think it. I think it, you're trying to run from something that bothers you. Now, some people say, "No, oh, I just like the way it feels," you know, whatever. Teach his own. All I know is I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. But I, w I would say that Coke specifically, dude. You get heavy into Coke, you're. It's only a matter of time before you lose. So these billionaires doing Coke, I bet you they're losing money. They're losing relationships. They're losing seriously without people knowing because there's so much buffer. Yeah. So it's like you think they're winning because they're billionaires. Well, I thought you said, you know, if you do coke, you're going to lose. Well, again, how do you know that billionaire is not draining currently? Yeah. And I guarantee your relationships are being screwed up. His health is being screwed up. It's not a good thing, no yeah. matter if you're a billionaire. Yeah, I mean, based on my experience, like, I feel 100% of what you said. Like, you just can't, like, your skin starts looking weird. Uh, you, you, your, your heart rate uh, is, is off. Like, it's no good. Yeah, it's, it's just, like, I wouldn't recommend that now to what anybody. If, now, what if you met somebody really influential, really cool, and you admired the shit out of them, and they were out, you guys were out, and they said, here, take a bump. 
I would separate myself. No, they say he did. Little little coke for you. I, I would I would uh I would not do that. I would I would it would be the last time that I would. Yeah, but you'd decline. But would you go out with that person anymore? No. How come? Because you turn you you will kind of you become who you hang out with. And this is something I learned in the beginning uh, when, when I first met you. Like, I wanted to be around you. And remember, like, I, I, didn't, I didn't purchase your light speed services. I purchased your friendship. And then you... Well, again, you're, you, that was, like, a long time ago. You need to re-up. I'll re-up it. And, and, then, and then you introduced me to new people, and then I invested in their friendship. So most people, they go to seminars, spend money on that stuff, I invest money in friendships. Like I make everybody my friend. Like all these people that, are, that have been at Driven Event, all these people that I've interviewed on YouTube, they become my friends. Like, the, like boxers, celebrities, big people like Kiyosaki and all these other people. Aren't people are, doing this now to you too that you coach? Yeah, yeah, because they're, they, they saw that it works, so now they're, they're, they're doing it. And, and the coaching thing, I, it's, it's something that I don't do anymore. I used to. But in the beginning, somebody messaged me and said, hey, Albert, uh, can you coach me? And, and I said, well, I, I don't really coach, but he said, come on, just coach me. I just need three hours of your time. And I said, okay, fine, 5,000. This guy sends me 5,000. He gives me his credit card, swipe it, 5,000 bucks for three hours. And then, I, and then people kept on hitting me up. Oh, you're coaching. So I said, okay, well, let me do it. This is like three years ago I, that I started doing that. Then I upped it to 15 grand for three hours. And people kept buying it. And then they got to a point where my, the revenue of the company, all the companies that we have, we have four companies, just started blowing up. And they needed me more. So I don't have time to be coaching people because it takes me away from my main billion-dollar uh, company that I'm building. Which one is that? The, the, which one makes you most money? The mortgage guys. The mortgage guys. How, how has the mortgage industry been affected by COVID? Look. This is why it's very important for people to have uh, cash flows, flows of income. Like, for example, like I have TMG Mortgage, guys, Ambience. That's a second cash flow, driven event, driven boot camp, driven coaching, driven academy, driven real estate investing. Even YouTube makes me money. Credit repair, processing, escrow that we just opened. And now we're a new one that I told you about yesterday, driven fitness. We're starting the gym. So they, everything they, they, that happens, I take the positive. So they close down the gyms. I'm opening my own gym now driven fitness and i'm always looking for for new flows and that is what saved me and my businesses when they were going out that i had different flows of income so my mortgage company it started making a lot of money and and i had the real estate company and i had driven driven did really good with the covid and ambiance my real estate company took a hit so for two months it was pretty much dried because you can't do open houses you can't go and you can't talk to people you have to do it like you can't nobody wants to buy a house because of the nobody knew what was going to happen everybody was panicking so real estate sales they drop but guess what mortgage guys 100x because everybody and their mama wanted to refinance everybody needed to pull out cash everybody wanted to get a lower rate because rates went all the way down so because i had a lot of different flows options whatever worked i doubled and tripled down on it and, and, and I made the most money I've ever made uh, after Corona than my entire life before. And what was everyone trying to get you to believe about COVID? Well, people were, were they, people watch the news and they, they're saying it's not, it's dangerous. You're going to die. You're going to get COVID. You're going to expose your little girls. You're going to expose your parents. And I said, well, I don't care. Like I'm either I'm either, I'm either gonna get the COVID and die of the COVID, or I'm gonna die getting broke and not being able to pay the bills for my daughters and feeding them and or giving money to my parents, or keeping my employees employed. So I said I'm gonna have everybody come back to work. I tried the the work from home two weeks didn't work out. People at home they're listening to negative family members. They're watching the news. They're jumping. They're rolling out of bed. That doesn't work for me, and I'm paying them. And the corona's going, I, t I told Sale, look, we're going to bring him back to the office. If I get sued, I'll have money to pay them. But I'm going to go down fighting if I go down fighting. I'll go down with corona, but I'll fight. And I did that. And everybody that I brought back to the corporate office, 
they've gotten their biggest bonus checks ever in their life because of the way we've we've just took off. So, and, and the fact that you're working and most of them are scared home working virtually. Yeah. Do you think if I should bring back all my employees right now? Absolutely. You think I should make an announcement that says all employees must work at the building from now on or you don't work here? Absolutely. If not, they, like you said, it they, they could go look for a different job. How would you tell people that? I would tell them that we believe in here at light speed and in and, and working in, in the office, you know, working in this office environment, you're going to take a precaution. You're going to have maybe put your little sticker six feet apart, get some light speed masks. And if they want to wear it, they could wear it, but they don't have to wear it. And just know your, your, the laws here in, in, in Nevada, because they might be different than California and your industry. Well, they can't be worse than California. Well, if I'm doing that, you should be fine. But real estate, anything that where you where transactions get recorded, real estate, it, it's considered uh, an essential job. So I heard it. So I, as a media company, there you go. I twisted it, and I just kind of made it broad. I'm like, okay, let's go work. And like I said, well, if some anybody can sue you for anything now, so if you're gonna get sued, you're gonna get sued. But they've been making their biggest paychecks ever. So if people want to come work right now, keep in mind that most people are scared and hiding and eating their Cheetos watching Netflix. When you come over here and you work, you're working against nobody because they're not working. And you guys take over the whole, your, your whole space. So, I mean, I think just give, give them the option. If they don't want to come back to work, then they could just keep collecting their 400 bucks a week if they still have that. That's a bomb. That's right, folks. Now, here's the question. Why do you feel so strongly that they are more productive at work? Because of the fact that they're not, they're, they're in an, a better environment? Yes. And that's 100% a good, good, you know, perspective, good angle. Yeah. People, we, we've built a culture in, in our office, and we've, Ever, ever since we announced we're opening the gym, we're doing this, people have been working from the office and then numbers have been going up because they, it's something about the environment and the culture. It just makes people better. Like when I hang out with uh, positive people, I'm positive. When I hang out with millionaires, I became a millionaire. Now I'm hanging out with billionaires because I know that I'll become a billionaire. It just happens. It's weird. Yep. Well, I can't deny. I wish I could. I wish we could have a debate here. Albert, but we always agree on most things, don't we? What's one thing you and I don't agree on? Do you know of anything? I would have to, uh, I'd have to think about it. Yeah, because a lot of times we'll shoot the shit, and believe it or not, the things we're talking about today, it's a fact. It, all of the things that you hear out in the world, generally speaking, of course, like, you know, success leaves clues. They do. You know, like action causes like result. If you do what Albert did, I'll bet you. Now, again, not all people, but most people would have a like effect, a like result. What do you think about that? You think it was because you're cool and, you know, you're Albert? Or if anybody did what you did, they would make it too. Yeah, but it's all going to depend on your level of pain tolerance. Because most people, they think that they're going to do what I did, what you did. And it's not going to be, and it's going to be, you know, a process where it won't be painful, but it's really painful. Like it, you go through ups and downs and, um, you have to be able to tolerate pain because person that tolerates more pain, people that, uh, people that keep more, uh, self-improving people that just never quit no matter what, those are the people that make it because everybody like, have you ever met somebody or has somebody ever left your company? Because sure. they said, uh, fuck Brad. I like, I'm smarter than him. I think I could do what Brad's doing and open up my own, my own uh, shop. Nothing so far. <laughs> it, it, is, is it, is it hard to create another light speed? Yes. So has somebody ever said, well, I'm going to take my content off of light speed and Not go and go, go put it on my own platform. I'm going to create my own platform. One person wanted to, uh, one person tried to build, um, their own platform at one point in time. So if you're asking, but they weren't employees. No employees ever left here thinking that they can do this because they'd know better. But there's people that tried to do this because they saw it and heard of it yeah. and then tried to replicate it, but they've long been out of business. 
Um, of course, I've been doing this 20 years, so it's so it's a long, long journey. So, 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 but so, your your point is valid. Yeah. So something really quick. I know you have to you have to uh, run to uh, another meeting, but uh, I want to talk about Driven Academy really quick. The reason why I got in once I got to know you because I paid you for your friendship, but then once I got to learn what you really do, I started saying, "Wait, why don't I?" I always like to go to the best in their fields, and and you're the best in virtual training. And I said, this guy knows what's up. This guy, you know, I I feel like like Grant wouldn't be where he where he is without you. I feel like Grant was going uh, traveling a lot, doing a lot of workshops in person, and he wasn't really uh, there for for family and other things that were more important. And and I know how that feels. So I feel like without you, he wouldn't be where he's at right now. And and I, and because I studied him like eight years, seven years, uh, 10 years ago, like I studied, I know everything about him and I studied everybody very good. I studied you very well. Like I know everything about you, like sleeping in the beach, uh, what you were doing seven years ago, eight years ago. Like I'm, it's pretty, it's kind of weird in a way, but I study people so well because I want to know everything about him. So I, I knew you were the guy. Once I studied you after I, I paid you for your friendship and I said, he could do the same thing for me but quicker than what he did for Grant. So I said, okay, uh, Cardone University, Driven Academy. Let me just fly with Brad and, 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 and every time I'm hanging out with him, I'll, I'll pull something. You know, if I could give him an extra drink, pull some more info, let's do it. And hey, how, how, what you do in this scenario? Well, I did this, is okay. I would, and you know how good I execute. I go back and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hire this, we're doing this. Uh, oh, forget about that. Um, Brad said to do this, let's, let's do it. Now, Driven Academy, just for two years, I'd never used it. Now it's doing 60 grand a month minimum, sometimes more. And 60 grand a month is not a lot of money, but it's a side little uh, extra income that comes in that allows me to use it for other things. You know, it, it pays for my lifestyle and more. Like, it, it's just extra money. And I don't even run ads. You said run ads, do this. Guess what I'm going to do when I go back home? I'll come back next month and I'll be making a quarter million a, a quarter million a month from Driven Academy. But because you are an expert in that field, I just trust you blind, blindfold. So I'm, if you tell me to do something, I'll go do it and I'll come back and improve Albert. Remember the first time you had me on the live here with Grant, I was shaking. My confidence, the way I speak wasn't there. And just because I execute is what makes the difference. So you tell me to do something... I, I go out there and do it. So, and without Driven Academy, I don't think I would have made these big strides because the Coron Driven Academy is coronavirus proof. It's recession proof. When recessions happen, people want to learn. So I want to give you thanks for that. Sure. Well, dude, that's the business I'm in. It's my pleasure. We'll do more business. Folks, I don't know if you guys are following Albert, but it's the Albert Preciado, P-R-E-C-I-A-D-O. Where do you hang out? Instagram? Well, people could just Google me, Albert Preciado. What's your YouTube channel? Driven? Driven channel. Driven Driven CH. Driven CH. You got that thing blowing up. You got people viewing left and right. You're starting to interview, like fly around and interview these big name people. I'm, I'm going to be with Andy, Andy Frisella and uh, Tom Bilyeu uh, next couple of weeks. See, Andy knows his shit. Tom Bilyeu's been around. He knows his shit. See, folks, follow Albert. And follow what he's doing if you guys want to succeed. I know that uh, everything he just said, if you hit rewind and listen to it again, write down exactly what he said. The one at the end was the most important. You said you go and you execute. Because without the action, dude, folks, we can be students forever. And we can, you know, talk about it forever. But until you do it, until you do something, nothing's going to change. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, Brad, if I could add one, one last thing. One quick thing, uh, something that I left out that we could, people could look me up and get more information is on if I wouldn't have invested in real estate, I wouldn't be here either. Because when I started my business, my first business, Mortgage Guys, I was uh, close to going out of business hundreds of times. Every time I would get into trouble, I would pull out money from my properties. I would sell a property. And I started buying four unit little properties, four unit apartments, four unit apartments. I accumulated a lot of them which I, when I sold, I, my net was uh, $2 million plus. 
So now, is now still a good time to do that? I think the best time to buy is starting 2021. I'm going to go buy in Arizona. And there's a lot of other places to buy. California is probably not the best. But if you are in California, you got to start where you're at. So you got to start in California. Always start where you're at and start small. Never start big. People tell you to start big. Don't listen to that nonsense. You got to start small. You got to start with your own money. And some if you don't own a property right now, go get a FHA loan, 3.5% down. That's nothing. You could borrow it from a credit card. You could borrow it from a friend. Put those 3.5% down. Get yourself four units, up to four units. Because once you go past four units, it's, it's a commercial. Learn the small game first. And once you make those millions, then go get your commercial, your big deals with your own money and keep, keep all the profit. Because remember, you're either going to you're either going to give people a, a, your, your savings. They're going to make the big profit. You're going to get a little piece. They're going to get the paddock. I teach people how you get your own, build your own real estate portfolio, and you buy yourself your own paddock. You make your own self rich. So if it would have been for that, I wouldn't be here because I wouldn't have had those reserves or that money to save my business. And that's, all, that's one of the key components that we teach at Driven Event, which you're going to be part of, Brad. And um, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be an amazing opportunity for people, entrepreneurs, whether you own a business, want to start a business, or want to scale your business, to go learn everything that I paid millions of dollars to all my mentors in one day and just get it for the price of one. So I'm really excited. I'm really excited to have you there because you've been a very, very instrumental person in my life and, and my entrepreneurship career. And uh, you're one of the reasons why I give my family the life that I give them today and why I'm able to uh, inspire a lot of people in, in, you know, in the universe. So. so how do they get tickets? DrivenEvent.com. DrivenEvent.com, folks. Or, go or, get your tickets. Or send me an Instagram DM. I answer all my DMs. Yeah, and tell them it's, you came from the bomb squad so we know sure. what's cracking. For sure. Folks, share this out. If it's not for you, someone might need to hear it. Until next time. Mm -hmm.